And you are now listening to Oversaturated, the podcast hosted by Johnny and Ralph. Now let's get it. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Oversaturated, the podcast where we discuss music, movies, pop culture, and everything in between. I'm Johnny. And I'm Ralph. Welcome to episode number 133. 133, superior segue this week. I like that. That's hard, actually. Uh, new listeners, please follow us on all social media. Facebook, just search Oversaturated, the podcast. Instagram is Oversat the Podcast. Twitter is Oversat Podcast. And our email is Oversat Podcast at gmail.com. And please be sure to check check out our website, OversatThePod.com. Anything you need to know about OS is there. Yes, sir. And if you need to follow us individually, I am the Mind of Rapper <clears throat> on Instagram and Twitter. On Twitter, I'm J O N two underscores the letter B. On Instagram, I'm J B S underscore E S L underscore A A M U. Holla at us. Man, I was stumbling out the block. See, I can't do two things. Let's, it was. It's okay. I should have. I should have. Like, I asked you if you was ready, I, man. No, I was I ready. Was, I was trying to. <laughs> I was trying to make sure my song of the week was downloaded, ah. so I could just have it ready, so I wouldn't have to do too much when we hey, get man, to that point. Pre-production, we we'll but- be all right. <laughs> We ain't in a rush, baby. But I, I know a Super Bowl talk. Sunday. We ain't in a rush. We not in a rush. <laughs> oh man, but yeah, man. Like Johnny said, it's Super Bowl Sunday. This, you know, we typically record on Sundays. Episodes come to you uh, Monday morning. Yeah. Uh, uh, Johnny, are you excited for the Super Bowl festivities this uh, evening? I'm gonna be honest with you. So mm-hmm. I'm. I'm a super casual football fan. The Rams is my team. The mm-hmm. Rams are my team. Mm-hmm. Not sure the proper tense there, but anyway. Um, like, I, I'm excited to see the Rams playing the Super Bowl, especially mm-hmm. playing in their home stadium. Like, it's dope, right? Yeah, yeah. But, hey, man, I've been disappointed in the past. <laughs> so, it's like, look, I'm, I'm happy they there, but it's it's, it's a toss-up. Listen, this ain't Tom Brady. Like, Tom Brady is a sure shot. Can't say, I can't say that about the Rams. I no can't. matter what, even though they're the favorites this time, it's still like, I, 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 I don't know hey, what's going to hey, happen. Hey, hey. Low key, we, we seen, probably we, shouldn't have been there. We've seen sillier things happen. So, no, I get, I get it. It's like... You can be a super favorite going to the Super Bowl, then you know David Tyree catches his, you know, the ball off the helmet, and y'all eighteen to one. So you know you ain't undefeated no more. Listen. Or you know twenty five down, you know twenty five <laughs> points down. <laughs> <laughs> so you know you see oh, some of your things happen. Like it just happens, That's, man. Like so, I, I'm 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 cautiously optimistic. <laughs> I'll say that. That's what I am right now. Yeah, so I, yeah, I literally have no dog in the fight. I'm just enjoying the just game. Just enjoying man. the game, I'm baby. Just, hey, hey, <laughs> pieces of day. Hey, hey. So as a as a person whose player or team is not in the Super Bowl this year, who who do you think is going to win? Like, uh, I mean, the Rams should win. But if you ask me, who do I? I it's like this, you know. Okay, now I'm about to get into a bag because you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> um. You 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 like individual players like I like I like what the uh, the Rams players I like their individual stories but as mm-hmm. a, uh, you know as an organization fuck them like I don't care about I don't care about none of that <laughs> that's funny <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but I like the Bengals and the fact that they not even supposed to be there so I'm rooting mm-hmm. for that underdog type of story gotcha. but I mean I. It's, it's, it, it don't it, matter. It, can, it, really it doesn't don't matter. matter. <laughs> like I, I'm, hey, I'm not mad at it. I love it. You know, if the Rams win, hey, I guess. But you know, the Bengals <laughs> win. I'm like, hey, <laughs> that's too funny. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Like uh-huh. I had absolutely no idea who Joe Burrow was before, like three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, seeing seeing his story of like coming from LSU, right, mm-hmm. and then his teammate, they won a national championship. Mm-hmm. Teammate held him on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. Held him on his shoulders again. When they won the AFC Championship yeah. couple, a few weeks ago, like oh that's dope, that's dope as hell. So if they if they wasn't playing the Rams, I'd be like y'all go on, yeah, go on Joe Burrow do that, do that but, shit. But, but, but nah, Rams, bro, like, uh, nah, bro. <laughs> nah, hold, hold off, you got time. Yeah, like, yeah. No, big facts. <laughs> like, you got this time. only is what third season? Second. Sick. Second season in the NFL? Second. That's crazy. That's dope as hell. I, I listen, it. I can't even front. That's hard. That's but, hard as hell. Like, I love it. I love to see it, man. But I would love for Odell Beckham to get him, Aaron Donald, uh, Jalen Ramsey. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to see them get a ring. Like, that would be yeah, super that's, dope. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I would never hate on that. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? As a 
as an organization, like as, the, <laughs> as the, a staff, the, 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 a crew, <laughs> a record label. The, yeah, all, all, the that niggas, all them niggas at the top. <laughs> all the niggas with the suits. Fuck them. Yeah. Like, it's not the players. It's the, the top. The top. Boy. Yeah, I was actually, I was talking to some of my coworkers about it because all of them are Chiefs fans because mm-hmm. a lot of them from Kansas City. Oh, okay. But, um, they, they were saying, you know, they want to root for the Rams but not root for Stan Kroenke. I was like, well, just watch the game, and if the Rams win, just turn it off before the trophy ceremony. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's what I plan to do because, I mean, after that, it really don't even matter. <laughs> um, predictions on the halftime show. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, it's a lot going on. I don't know if we discussed this on uh, the mic. Mm-hmm. It's like I was excited when I seen the you know the initial, oh, the initial all, announcement, yeah. of course. And then when you see the the trailers and the promotion behind, it, I was like, yeah. Super but you dope. got twenty minutes, my boy. <laughs> twenty. Twenty minutes and what? Five feature artists. Yeah, that's a lot. That's two minutes a piece. Man, if and man. I don't, I, I don't think. What man, Kendrick go get up there and do a poem? Like I don't know. Like what's going on, man? Yo, if he come out just for a cameo, that's super <laughs> trash. Because because what what songs does Kendrick have with Eminem, Mary J, Snoop? Or Dre that he could perform at the Super Bowl. That's what I was thinking. What song does Mary J have with them? Well, you know, she got family affair. Let's get it. Crazy. Well, I know that. I they, mean, they on the remix or something? No, I mean, she, I mean, Dr. J produced it, so that's, oh. all, that's the connection. Like, outside of that, what, what's the Mary connection? Mary J going to be the feature. <laughs> and everybody everybody else going to be the headliner. <laughs> do you, okay, do you think Kendrick Lamar debuts new music during the halftime show? He should, yes. I mean, he should, yes. But do I think? No. Okay. Because I was going back and forth with that. It's like. One moment. Oh. oh all right, Siri. Siri, chill. Relax. All right. <laughs> Damn, they listening to us. Um, <laughs> but I don't think Kendrick is going to have enough time to do that. Like, I think he should because, I mean, shit, there's going to be millions of people watching, right? Mm-hmm. But I just don't think he's going to have the time to debut a new song. Or if he does debut it, maybe debut a snippet of it, mm-hmm. and then it drops on all the DSPs immediately after the halftime show. That would be dope. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll no, no I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm, I think. And then I heard. I heard he's rumored to drop a new track. Because yeah, of, because yeah, of I, the I heard that too. But do you perf- do you perform a new rap song at the, on the biggest platform, or do you stick to your 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 big your, your one that everybody know, and then we can catch these new vibes tomorrow? Why your name is in the in the Twitter streets? I think Kendrick Lamar is a big enough artist where either or is fine. Like some artists can't debut the new joints and then. Okay, that's a that's a fair assessment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, honestly, regardless, I think this halftime show has the potential to be legendary, oh, depending yeah. on how everybody util- utilizes their allotted time. Yeah, but well, we'll, I mean, we're gonna see. Dre should have the less time then, if that's the case. I mean, he could just be up there as, yeah, as, as, as the a hype man. man. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> to like, be honest. I mean, but I mean, not, and that's not me discounting Dre's hits, but I think everybody's pulling up for He low key could be up there DJing, maybe actually doing the beats live while everybody else performed. That would be hard. I agree. That would I be just, hard. I just don't. I don't know. No. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. It's okay. And that's okay. I, I don't know anything. I guess we, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know anything. Wait, I just come here to talk. As the <laughs> listeners listen to this tomorrow after the halftime show, I guess we'll see which assessment was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll definitely see, right? That's funny. Um, that's all I got, though. I had a good week. We here. We here, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, good week. Uh, start the new gig. I mean, finally, you know. Got it happened. So, right. uh, just trainings. That's it, mm-hmm. man. Trainings. Mm-hmm. So, work has been. Hey, enjoy it now Because <laughs> right, right, when right. it turned up It's going to turn up like, all right, Go, go <laughs> right. do everything we taught you in, in a small amount of time And we <laughs> and we expect you to do it right too man, <laughs> so, what, so go do it It's Man, it's all it's a catch-22, right? Because, you know, during, the, during that first week or two Of training, it's like You only training, so you ain't really got to do much But you got to pay attention Because this is the shit you actually going to be doing, right? Yeah. So, it's, yeah That's funny yeah. Is it different? And then we can get off this is it different training from home versus training, like, in the office? I mean, well, yeah, it is because, like, this is a brand-new job, and then you don't get to, like, be in a classroom with your new uh, coworkers and my, things yeah, like that. So that's the that. only thing. But if you're talking about, like, the brown nose and stuff like that, it still happens even though it's Zoom. I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh, my God, this is a great training. This is yo, – you're, you're so great. Shut up. Please. Shut up. I, you don't like, know this. Like, like we've been doing that. this two days. How do you know everything? Shut up. 
Oh, so you've been studying off the clock. Oh, you, oh, that's you one of them. Oh, oh you one of them. Uh, I, 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 I see the type. I see, of, I see. I see how we playing yes, this. Cool, yes, cool. Yes, <laughs> that's a real thing. That's a real thing. That's a real thing. It's a real thing. I want to study after work, ass niggas. Like, like, <laughs> like, off the clock. Like, what's four o'clock? Comes my boy. Law. I don't. Let, I don't look at nan. No, I took. Let me tell you something. <laughs> when when it's time to log off, so. I, I have like a separate office a workspace in my house. So as soon yeah. as I log off, I don't even go back in that mug to the next talk, day. If, talk, if talk. I log off on Friday, I don't even look in that direction until talk, Monday morning. Talk that space shit. Talk look that, it, uh, that, that square footage. Hey, my man. boy said I don't even go in that wing of my house. Look, hey, I'm just saying. <laughs> you Bruce Wayne over here. <laughs> <laughs> my boy said I don't go to the back cave till it's time to. <laughs> Not the, the left wing. That's funny. But it's true. <laughs> anyway, all right, we are. Anyway, off, off the dog. Off the dog. Yeah. Well. Off the dog. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, man. Uh, I'll go first. Music question. I think it's fairly easy, too, right? Let's do it. Uh, soundtracks. We always get into what's the best soundtrack? What's the best song you ever heard off the soundtrack? But nah, I'm going I'm to flip it. What's the worst song you done heard that came from a soundtrack? Basketball jokes. <laughs> I got a basketball Joes. I got a basketball Joes. Ooh, baby. Ooh. <laughs> now, granted, as terrible as that song is, I actually like it. <laughs> now, it's a terrible song, but I love it. So, that's ba- Basketball Jones. That's. Is that Chris Rock? Chris Rock and. What, wasn't, hold on. Wasn't Basketball Jones on. Who, who movie was that about? I thought it was uh, Space Jam? Yeah. The, yeah. I think I want to say Chris Rock and um, man, what's uh, Barry White? If I'm not mistaken, yeah, yeah, it was definitely Barry White. Yeah, uh, or something like somebody like something that. like that. Either that or wait, no, this wasn't on the soundtrack. I was about to say No Sex in the Champagne Room. No, that was Drill Alert. That was Drill Alert. But that was Chris Rock trolling though too. I, I, I can't, you know, I wouldn't take that seriously. I'm just though. saying. But it was a, it, it was a horrible it was song. hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, Basketball Jones, though. Terrible song. Even though I liked it. Terrible song. Yeah. But, yeah. No, nah, this is, um, you remember that song Diddy had called Come With Me with the rock riff from the Godzilla soundtrack? Mm. Like, <laughs> he was rapping over it. I was like, oh, Diddy. Nobody asked for this. Oh, no, I never heard oh, that. Oh, oh, that sounds Okay. Terrible. This was 99, 2000, <laughs> somewhere up in that. You remember they made that Godzilla movie? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Back then, mm-hmm. Diddy was on the lead track for that. The I lead track for the soundtrack. For definitely that. don't remember. Now, that. this was when. Okay, I'm That's gonna get cool. into. I'm gonna get into a whole bag, and then I'm gonna tie it into right. Okay. Now. The worst thing that could have happened for Diddy was winning that that Grammy for No Way Out because yeah. it gave him a lot of agency to do other things. Mm-hmm. Because remember, Diddy was out here being nasty for a long time with the songs. Remember Public Enemy number one and what? <laughs> yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was that era, so Got that's you. probably <laughs> that's probably why one of them songs you was like ah. Damn. But and the I, video was trash. Like, he was fighting, like, the Godzilla and all kind of stuff. It had special effects. Like, remember Diddy was the special effect? Like, the videos was on point. That's hilarious. Like, for you to have the CGI Godzilla in your video, <laughs> like, hey, man, the budget was out there. But the song, get that out of here, though. The fact that you did it. I, bro, it, it says I, a lot, though. May, and maybe, maybe, maybe if I, like... See the video, or actually hear like the melody or whatever. Like I pulled it up because the video came to my mind randomly one day, and I was like, "Oh, this song is horrible." And that's <laughs> what inspired the question. So that's funny as hell. And I, I'm pretty sure there are worse soundtrack oh, songs like that are actually like they actually attempted to make a good song, but this is not it like, but at I'm, all. And but at some point, like how did like how would you even know? A soundtrack song is bad if you don't actually listen to the soundtrack. Like like well, the well, one the one you talked about was like a, a single, a lead single, right? Yeah. yeah. So like that's the only. Those are the only soundtrack songs I would really know of yeah, outside yeah. of like a waiting to excel soundtrack or some yeah, shit like that. And then I mean and then it's hard pressing when you start getting into deep cuts of album like soundtrack cuts, like, okay. Like <laughs> Yeah. Like cause you, you start talking about top two soundtracks at that point anyway. Exactly. Exactly. So no, nah, I feel that. I feel but that. yeah, trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so for my off the dome, kinda sports inspired, but mm-hmm. Walk, walk with me here, right? Mm-hmm. So, if money wasn't an issue, <clears throat> excuse me, if money wasn't an issue, would you rather own a top tier sports franchise or own a string of top tier restaurant franchises? And this is one I actually had to think on myself. And I honestly, I, I'm still kind of back and forth. It depends on what you know what we're talking about. Like I guess top tier, like it'd be a top tier. What is top tier when you talking about music? I mean food. 
Like it can be McDonald's, right? Yeah, like, yeah. No, it, like, it, it, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be Ruth Chris. Like it doesn't have to be right. Like and that. by top tier, I mean like uh, brand, franchises brand, that's gonna brand. that's gonna get you billion dollars if you if you own a. a well, this is the thing: owning a sports franchise doesn't get you a billion dollars. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just kind of like a novelty that rich people have. No, now, uh, if you happen to make money, cool. Understood. Yeah. Understood. But yeah. some of the <clears throat> some of these sports franchises. The name, the trademark, all that alone is worth yeah. a billion. Well, so even if you go, get to a point where, hey, I don't want to be an owner anymore, let me sell it. Yeah. You sell it for. I think. I think the reward of own. I'll say this. Uh, my answer will be sports franchise. Okay. I think the reason being, I think it's more rewarding. Like, say if you have a franchise that's like, like the Golden State Warriors pre all this thing with Steph Curry and everything was just like okay. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now they're a top tier franchise. Yep. Like they are. Worth billions of dollars, where they might have been just worth a couple hundred millions, yep. even though that's you know not small change, but, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like the brand Golden State has elevated within the past ten years, right? Yep, Definitely. like like one hundred percent. It's up there with like I wouldn't say it's like <clears throat> the top tier North American because when you talking about North American franchise, you're talking about the Lakers, you're talking about the the Yankees, you're talking about the Cowboys. Like nobody's really dethroning them for the and even the Knicks. The Knicks are worth. A lot yeah, of money. a lot of money, yeah. So, I would own a franchise. Like, I think the potential of, uh, like, your money getting, like, you know, you getting more money is in the sports game. Like. Got you. I mean, but it takes <clears> a lot to, you know. Oh, yeah. Oh, one. It takes a lot. It takes a lot. It takes the right marriage of, you know, players and coaches and, mm-hmm. you know, the actual personnel on the court to sell the brand. But once the brand has been sold, it really don't <laughs> go nowhere. Because, look, the Knicks ain't been good in our lifetime. If you want to stretch it out to our, our, our moms and dads, that's probably where, you know, they last time they won the ship was like the 70s. Yeah. So. And even but, when they were good, it was Michael Jordan stopping them. So. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> so so. That, that's why I say I'm, I'm going to give them the championship year. Like anything else after that, all right, y'all was competitive. Right. But other than that is, but the New York Nick franchise, mm-hmm. it, <clears throat> even though you can put a dollar amount on it, it, it you can't value it. Mm-hmm. It's too, it's invaluable. Yeah. And that's something that, <laughs> and that's just one thing. McDonald's is spread across. I get it, but mm-hmm. your McDonald's, like, how much money is your McDonald's making? You know what I'm saying? So that's nah, that's, real. that's the other that's thing real. too. That's real. See, <clears throat> and when I was thinking about this, I was looking at it from. So my, I think I, for right now, and this could change tomorrow, but yeah, right yeah. now, I think my my answer would be to own those top tier fast or top tier food franchises yeah. only because. I'm looking at it from a sports owner's perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Looking at like how players react, like bent with the whole Ben Simmons situation, like mm-hmm. just sitting out, you know, wanting out, which is cool from his perspective, but like as an owner, it's like I feel like that would be diminishing the brand, diminishing the team, diminishing all that kind of stuff. And mm-hmm. as an owner, that's not something I want to put up with. So from from that perspective, I would choose the I, fast I, food I, franchises because I feel like they they sell themselves. I mean, you could put in a little bit more effort to make, you know, make your I, I, own better. I get, but. I get, I get what you mean. The owning a sports franchise is definitely more people. Like, you have to deal with the person, the politics of people mm-hmm. more. Like, you still have to deal with it on the food side, but definitely with the sports side, like people sells, like people really sell this. It's not yeah. necessarily an item, right? It's not, you know, food isn't gonna sell. Facts. Food is gonna sell. Exactly. So, no, I, I I get what you mean there. Yeah. I get what you mean there. Yeah, so but no man, that was off the dome, man. What is the worst song you've heard from a soundtrack and why? Yep. And if you had the opportunity to own a top tier sports franchise or uh top tier food franchises, which one would you choose? Okay. Let us know. Let's get into that. But you know what time it is. We about to get into this docket OS game. What up? What's happening? Man, let's talk about this. We always get into the versus stuff first. Let's just stay there. Let's stay consistent yes. with how we lead this yes. thing off. Yes. So yes. <laughs> uh it's it looks at that we're having a versus, but this time we're gonna uh do something completely different. We're gonna have a a collaboration between Bleacher Report and Versus TV mm. with a highlight highlight battle between yeah. two NBA Hall of Famers, two NBA legends, Allen Iverson versus Tracy McGrady. Johnny, what are your thoughts on this? I think I remember about I'm just going to say a year ago. It could could have been longer, could have been shorter. Mm-hmm. Versus announced that they were going to branch off into other entertainment properties with comedy and sports and things like that. So, I th- and I believe this is the first highlight. sports versus that we're going to have, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'll say highlight battle. I think they've done, I, you know, I, I believe. Okay. I believe. 
Um, so, but first of all, this is dope. Like mm-hmm. to be able to have two of the greatest basketball players to ever play in the NBA battle it out over their highlight reels. I think this is this is dope. Um, mm-hmm. I hope it's well received. I mm-hmm. hope it. I hope their planning for this goes well because I think this has the opportunity to blow up kind of how the music versus is going. Like this, mm-hmm. this is dope, man. To get Allen Iverson and Tracy McGrady battling over highlight reels, this is going to be fire. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's dope. Yeah, especially like, yeah, oh, you can always look up the highlights, but it's different when they get a chance to talk about their highlights. And even if, like, say if somebody had like a highlight on one of the players, like, oh, you know. Oh, no, nah, yeah, look. You, you, I don't know if you remember this play. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So things like that have an opportunity to present itself, and then they're uh, putting this with All-Star Weekend, which is a great marketing Super strategy. Dope. So it gives another allure to NBA All-Star Weekend, which is probably the best in All-Star Weekend in all of sports because Agreed. it's marketed like that. Agreed. So Agreed. I think it's dope, man. I, I really ain't got too much for this. Like, I, I want to see it. Like, yeah. I want to see this. And the fact that we get Allen, Allen Iverson and Tracy McGrady, you know, Walking us through their highlights, what's going through their minds during mm-hmm. these point, uh, you know, during these highlights, how these highlights came to be, like what's happening in the moment, like yeah. to be able to get those stories, it's gonna it's gonna be dope, man. How you know how we get all the the music history when the artists talk about how the songs came to be, how the songs got written, things like that. Mm-hmm. To be able to get that on the sports side, I think it's going to be dope because I. I don't think we get enough of the players talking about their, their own, own highlights and stuff and things like that. Like, and, that's dope. And virtually, like, uh, Allen Iverson and, and Tracy, they haven't been, like, recluse or anything. But mm. they've been, you know, they've been out. They've been outside. They probably do, you know, interview here and there. But yeah. it's different when you get a chance for them to sit down and kind of give each other flowers. And then, you know, maybe a little occasional trash talk. So right. I'm, I'm with all. I'm with, I'm with it. With all of it. It's yeah, dope, I'm, man. I'm with that. So, no, that's dope, man. And, you know, it's just good to see that they'll be giving each other flowers. But I think we should, you know, kind of give somebody else their flowers. A legend here. Snoop Dogg, you know, he's tied to the Super Bowl and all that. But he recently acquired the rights to Death Row Records. Death Row is the label that pays me. has a new <laughs> meaning today. Big facts. Johnny, your thoughts on the <coughs> hip-hop legend purchasing his old record label? Um, so just off the bat, this is this is dope. Mm-hmm. Um now in reading different headlines in regards to this story, <clears throat> I was slightly confused. Mm-hmm. So I saw some headlines say he bought the death row brand. Mm. So does I and I'm not sure if that means he acquired like the trademark right trademark rights to like the name, the brand, the logo, things like that, or mm-hmm. if that means he purchased the actual label where he owns the catalogs of the different artists. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not particularly sure the the case in you know the case in w- whatever this is. Um, but overall, this is dope. Now, if it's where he owns the music, the rights, the trademark, the label, all that, this is super fire because yeah. this is the label that broke him out as a as an artist to get to get him ultimately where he is today mm-hmm. which is super fire now mm-hmm. if this is only just a brand thing i mean it's still it's still dope mm-hmm. but not i don't think it's well okay no no go finish your, uh, i don't finish think if, it, if it's only if it's only the brand and the licensing of like the name and the trademark and all mm-hmm. that still still kind of dope because there are there are things he could do with that especially with him <coughs> breaking off into the metaverse and crypto and all that as he yeah. has um but i don't think it's as dope if it if the music isn't attached to the purchase yeah, yeah. um well according to this at least this pitchfork um article mm-hmm. it doesn't say the details of it because mm-hmm. it's not it's not out there for public consumption. right right so right, right. all we can do is speculate now, do I think he owns it outright 100%? Hell no. Because, like, the I say this. Death Row, even though it's dysfunct now, is one of the premier labels in hip-hop. It's, it's a the premier brand. So 100%. whoever owned it, they didn't give up 100 Oh, no, 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 like, no, 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 no. <laughs> now, now, I mean, now, could I, be, could I live in a world where I believe that he owns maybe 49 percent like i can believe that mm-hmm. but you don't think but, that you don't think they'll let him get majority hell sh- no. 51 50 50.5 percent no no absolutely <laughs> not like if hold on it says he uh he purchased it from N- mnrk music group mm-hmm. if they did this this is a this is the finesse of the of a lifetime <laughs> <laughs> no that's big face no, no, you're right fake. i you mean right. because like just that you know you got access to you know Dr. Dre and all that, all that early death row stuff, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. You got it now. Mm-hmm. 
Like, hey, I ain't, I don't know what Snoop and Pac is looking like, and it's it's dope that he leveraged this. This is great. Like, I, I I have nothing bad to say about it. I'm just I just don't believe that this music group gave him a hundred percent. I don't. I don't. I'm glad you I'm glad you mentioned it because I didn't even think about it. So just like off just off of reading this article and seeing other headlines, it's like not not saying I would think Snoop will own a hundred percent, but maybe majority stake. I mean, if he if he had, had, owning any percent is dope. Don't yeah, get me wrong. But if he well, he owns enough for this to be a headline. So let's just say it was it's it's got to be at least forty and up. Like it's oh, got to be. It's got to. Got like, This doesn't make headlines. He owns a quarter. You don't think? You don't think so? Nah. I, I mean, I. Uh, well, hey, who knows? A quarter of a quarter of what Death Row is worth could be a lot of money. That's all I'm saying. And I mean, well, okay, yeah. I stand corrected. <laughs> but I just feel like. For Snoop to put his name on this, it's gotta, it's, it's gotta be. I don't think it's the money, but mm-hmm. then the money doesn't hurt either. You know what oh, I'm of course not. But I mean, and then it says his new album is going to be released under Death Row too. Oh yes, so it actually came out this past weekend, mm-hmm. and the album is titled "Back on Death Row." Yeah. So I'm assuming you haven't you haven't heard it. <laughs> no, I haven't listened okay. To it. Uh, I, I listened to it. Um, I actually listened to it this morning while I was like getting ready and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Actually, not a bad album. Snoop. Okay. <laughs> like, okay. Album I'll say bad. this: whenever I tap into a Snoop project, they don't be bad. Like, they don't. They don't be bad. But this one, <laughs> this one is actually much better than the joint he just put out on Def Jam. Oh, so it's like, okay. Like this, it's one of them. Okay. Like, it's oh, one of them. okay. Well, I mean, I I just didn't run to it, but that didn't. I mean, I'll get to it. Yeah, I'll get to it's, it. Now, it's one. It's one song on there. I I know for sure you're gonna skip, but <laughs> let, well, whenever you get, listen to it, we are gonna come back and talk about it because this shit is so funny. Shit okay. Funny, so now man. now I have to listen to it with <laughs> knowing which song I'm gonna skip. Like <laughs> knowing which song I'm gonna skip. This is wild. This is wild to me. That is too funny. Um. But no, nah, man, shout out to Snoop because this is dope. Um, shout out to Snoop. That's that's all I really got on this. Like the fact the fact that he has any percent of, ownership of this, in yeah. this is dope as hell. And knowing how Snoop moves, Snoop is like one of, if not the most popular entertainer out of rap like ever. Like which is dope as hell. So seeing how Snoop. he's going to leverage his ownership in Death Row going forward is going to be fire. Snoop stay with the bag because right now he's the. Uh Kind of like the president over at Def Jam right now. Yeah, so, oh, I'm glad you mentioned. Snoop stay with a bag. I'm glad you mentioned that. So do do you think with him being a president over at Def Jam and him having, I guess, partial ownership in Death Row now, it, do you see that as somewhat of a conflict of interest? Oh, it definitely sounds like conflict of interest. But then again, hey, I'm pre- Snoop got people to handle like you know those types of things. I would imagine. So yep. it's kind of like. You know, can I do this and still do this? Mm-hmm. Because uh, Snoop is how you say how you saving two fledgling brands at the same time. Because <laughs> Dev Jam is not what it used to be. Definitely anymore. not. And then Snoop, and then you know, Dev Row, you know, pretty much defunct when Snoop left. Yeah. And Pop died, so it's like all that. It's like everybody, all your major players left. So you know, Dev Row pretty much you know died out in the nineties, and then you now. Mm-hmm. This, you know, the Def Jam thing is kind of like, and I imagine that. Damn, I, I hate to go too far off, but I wonder how much the Snoop brand helped Def Jam. You know, got. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, because think about it. Like, who's the young hot artist that's gonna be like, hey, you know what? Since Uncle Snoop over here, I'm gonna sign mm-hmm. with Def Jam. Mm-hmm. When it's been proven that some artists just don't need machines anymore. True. Oh, it's spe- especially not in 2022. Definitely because not. I mean, Benny signed a Def Jam, uh, and under, I th- and under, I th- under the Snoop thing, but and honestly, I think that might have just been a production. If I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, because because you know, a lot of people got hands in Benny pockets, which is one Rock Nation with the management stuff, mm-hmm. and then now Def Jam. So it's like, but how much bigger is Benny going to be? Because Def Jam's behind it. Got you. Because I mean. Before I, I even called Wind of Benny, which was 2019, 2018, 2019, mm-hmm. um, he he was buzzing a little bit even before that. So mm-hmm. for him and Griselda to be where they are now to do all that on their own, like I mean, hell, they they've already done tonight shows and stuff. So it's like, what 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 else does the record label going to provide besides a record, a, exactly. a, a, a radio single? That's it. Exactly. Like we're gonna get you to radio. Yeah, and that. And maybe sometimes, like a, that. well, maybe that's sometimes what a record label can do, can provide the formula, you know? But it's, I don't, well, tr- true. What you're saying is true. Mm-hmm. But in the case of Benny 
I don't think that formula will work for him because he already, I guess, maybe found his own formula. I don't know. Well, I mean, what he's doing is working well for him, but I don't know if, if like, what you're trying to do is cross over to mainstream. Maybe. I mean, and, like, and at least mainstream rap, right? That's because, the only way I can see him trying to go as, now. Because as much as we like Benny, give me one song that they play in a radio or a club set. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, those things don't happen. And it's not to diminish anything of mm-hmm. his talent because mm-hmm. he's a very oh, talented no, phenomenal MC. Rapper. Yeah, yeah. Phenomenal. phenomenal, right? But if you're talking about certain levels, okay, your stuff don't get played here. Mm-hmm. Your stuff don't get played mm-hmm. here. And if that's what you want, I maybe Def Jam is, the, you know, the place that can kind of help you do that. Right. Because <clears throat> clearly Shady didn't help. They was on Shady. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I forgot about that. They, all, they got out they deal quick as hell. Damn, I oh, forgot. They, they dropped one thing. They was like, all right. All right, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the slaughterhouse effect. <laughs> uh, but, um, but yeah, man. Shout, is... shout out to Snoop. Man, shout, <laughs> shout out to Snoop, man. Snoop, Snoop will be performing at the halftime show, and we might as well get into this NFL bag here, man. Interesting article came up across Twitter. Uh, Mike Freeman of USA Today wrote an article. Uh, let me make sure I uh, – quote the article correctly Mm -hmm. um but it's a it's an opinion-based article so you know take that with a grain of salt but it said the nfl and jay-z said they are amplified uh lead social justice efforts and they well they didn't interesting interesting topic right yeah um one of those things is kind of be bitten uh being beat it's like beating a dead horse but nonetheless johnny what do you think about this article and the commentary when i i didn't realize mike freeman was black yeah, <laughs> I didn't. That was a so, white guy. <laughs> no, for real. Because I mean, I, I read the article mm-hmm. and then I didn't realize they had his face next to his name mm-hmm. under US, US, USA Today. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I'm really, I'm really not sure where to start here because okay. it's 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 frustrating for me to read something like this because. What did we really expect to happen when mm-hmm. Jay Z and the NFL first announced their partnership? Mm-hmm. Like, what did we really expect to happen? Me personally, I I didn't know. Like, I I still don't know now. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I I don't know what to expect. Right? And mm-hmm. Jay Z is the type of person to you know when he does his business dealings and all that. Like, everything is done behind the scenes. We never see a result until the result is about to happen or is happening. Right? Mm-hmm. So. I just I don't know what Mike Freeman is trying to get at in this particular article. Like, mm-hmm. is he trying to say, "Hey, Jay Z, you've been in dealings with the NFL for what two or three years now, I and think three. we think we haven't three, seen anything"? Okay, fine, but it, all all business dealings to this magnitude are done behind the scenes. Like, mm-hmm. Jay Z isn't the type of person to just parade everything that's happening around. And I think he has a big enough influence to tell the NFL, hey, yeah, we're still working on this, but you don't need to leak any information until things are done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I removed my whole whole venture cap for this because mm-hmm. this is something bigger than just me being a fan of somebody's music, right? Right. And I can understand the the blurred lines like, okay, he's, he's a great entertainer, but entertainers don't always provide results in social justice you know situations he's not the first person to do it you know he won't be the last so um i can look at this with a broad stroke and i definitely think that he's not above criticism so i'm never on that don't mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. but was i not running to the lynch mob when he said what he said no like i i, I honestly i don't do that with anybody <laughs> if you if you can if you can, i stay consistent with criticism yep. of most people, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if even if they're rooted in bias, I still stay. <laughs> I, still stay <laughs> I still stay consistent, but I just don't run to the lynch mob of certain things. Like, you know, oh, well, look at them, yeah, like, right, I, mm, right, right. I, no, it doesn't get me like riled up in that way. But, uh, I mean, Jay Z definitely kind of put his foot in his mouth with this one. Like, just the whole we're past kneeling. I get the notion, but the words. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The words, no, 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 were, like, the words are wild. And for you to get in bed with the NFL and you be and you can't support Kaepernick and do what you're doing, right? Mm-hmm. But I'm not saying somebody had to do it because we know the NFL is a good old boys club. Like Goodell is just a face. Like Roger Goodell is just a face, a commissioner that can't really keep these billionaires in line. They actually he actually works for them. Yeah. Oh, so right, right, when it right. comes to hiring practices, and I think that's what 
he the the article uh the journalist was getting at um we had Brian Flores that was uh he's suing the uh, NFL in the class action lawsuit <laughs> about, about hiring that. practices yeah. right well they have the Rooney rule in place if they don't abide by the Rooney rule a it is what it is it's a twofold thing right when you're an NFL owner you can't tell me what the fuck to do with my, you know, my franchise. I can do what the hell I, I want. own this. I this own is this. My like, shit. It, it, sport, like we talked about <laughs> yes. sports ownership. Yes. So if your pipeline of people just happen to be white, that's quite unfortunate. Mm-hmm. But hey, it, it's I'm I'm not apologizing for NFL hiring practices. I just get it. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. I just get it. It's bullshit, mm-hmm. but I get it. And when you have qualified black or other ethnicities and races that can qualify for head coaching positions or general management positions or front office positions, maybe you should. And they don't have to always be former fucking players either. Like, there are other black or other like ethnicities mm-hmm. that went to school and did all the things that you asked them to do, and yet the goalpost keeps moving for them. That's right. And But, okay. this, but it's like this is putting the, the onus all on Jay-Z, it seems like. Mm-hmm. And that and that's the part I was like, well, he was definitely used in this situation. Oh yeah, like it was, it was definitely like, hey Jay, take this bag of money, and then you don't, and then you don't get to be Jay Z and have the business dealings that you do with having poor people in the forefront of your mind. Right. Like it sounds cool that he does these things, and I'm, you know, I'm grateful as a black man to see that. Mm-hmm. But then again, you don't get to billion dollar status by making these types of deals oh, yeah. with of course. the common man in mind. Mm-hmm. You never do. Now, with this particular article, if if Mike Freeman is trying to say Jay-Z was supposed to help with the hiring practices of black people, I think <laughs> I think he's comparing apples what, and oranges. That's what he led with. See that, that's what it seems like. That's what he led with. And what's what's crazy is that's different from social, social justice reform. Like, that's completely different. I actually found an article back from 2020 where it says Jay-Z gets the NFL to commit $100 million to criminal justice reform. And that's uh, over 10 years. So it's like for 10 years, it'll be $10 million donated to social justice reform, right? Mm-hmm. So I think this particular headline just voids everything he's trying to say, Mike Freeman is trying to say in this article because – Jay-Z himself can't do anything about the practices of the owners in their own football clubs. But what Jay-Z said that he was going to do was help the NFL. The social justice reform. Which is what is what has happened with this $100 million. Johnny with the research. Hey, man, listen. listen. Johnny with the research. I, I do a little bit sometimes. Okay. okay, okay. <laughs> but so I, which made me even more upset and frustrated at the article that Mike Freeman wrote. It's like you really just do. And it did say opinion. It yeah, is, it's, 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 it's opinion. It's opinion. This is a, but it's trash. <laughs> <laughs> but it's trash. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> it's trash. So no. it's like, fam. If and if, then and then if Rock Nations, if if the, if this if this deal is twofold, and I know it was bullet points because we talked about this when this deal happened. We so did. Yep. It's actual bullet points to this, but you know, in essence, it's twofold, right? Mm-hmm. The 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 entertainment stuff, the Super Bowl stuff, pretty much, right? Yep. And social justice reform. Yep. Has he delivered on both fronts? I mean, or as has Rock Nation, who's Jay Z, happens to be the CEO of, has he delivered? As of February twenty twenty two, yes. Okay, because <laughs> of the uh, the rap. Yes, <laughs> the rap. no, one hundred percent. That's why. That's why I said this much. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes, he has. <laughs> I don't even remember who performed the halftime. Oh, the weekend. Yeah, the, it was the weekend. Then it was like J Lo and Shakira. And, uh, it was yeah. Like that. So listen, from from my perspective, from my view. Jay Z has followed through on what he said he was going to do in in connection with the NFL. Yeah, like he's using uh, Jay Z's business practices and things like that, which can be questionable at times. Mm-hmm. You'll get no <laughs> you'll get no complaint from me on that, my boy. Like, yeah, yeah, I got nothing for you. If you want to call Jay Z a capitalist, cool. God bless. Like, I I just say I I you really don't become f- a billionaire not being a capitalist. Sorry, oh. sorry. I mean, I mean, but that's how Americans I don't. I don't, I don't I don't have the wool over my eyes with that either. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I can be a fan, and I know Jay Z is a narcissist. I know he's an asshole. I know he, he's he's hey, a capitalist. That don't mean I can't like the music. I don't. I can't like what the product he putting out. It's true. I'll never buy Ace of Spades in my life, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got to. I got. Do I have access to two grand? Yeah, but I don't have it for no goddamn bottle of champagne. Big fat. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Big fat. So <laughs> I'm just saying, with that point, I I get it. 
there's a level of criticism to be give to to be given out here. But I don't know if this was the right time. No, nah, this or, was I don't, I, don't, I don't know. This shit was trash. It like it shouldn't <laughs> shouldn't have been written. Like USA Today, come on, man. I'm not I'm not tiptoeing around giving Jay Z criticism because at first when it happened, I was just like ah. <laughs> right. I no, mean, I was just like, same, I, I was like, same. ah, my boy. But it's like, what what standard are we? What are we really holding Jay Z to here? Like that, and I guess my question is for Mike Freeman because he wrote this article, right? Yeah. Like, what are we really holding him to? Because whatever what he said he was going to do back in 2019, 2020, as of today, it sounds like he's done. Mm-hmm. That's what it. That's what it looks like. That's what it sounds like, based off of different articles that I've read. And yeah. I'm 100 percent not above giving Jay Z criticism. Oh, we know. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We know. So, we but know. trust me, if it was if it was criticism to be <laughs> oh, had, listen, <laughs> the fact I even got to defend clip, defend Jay Z. <laughs> listen, the fact that I got to defend Jay Z right now got me feeling like, oh my god, my chest. But I mean, I gotta you know, based off the facts that I found, it's like yeah. Jay Z has yeah. done what he said he was gonna do. Like I can't, I can't, I can't say nothing against it. I can't say nothing against Jay Z in this manner. I yeah. can't. Yeah. So, but no, nah, man, trash, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of something that people might deem as trash, man, let's talk about this future promotion, man. He has uh, sat down and made a promotional <laughs> video for his new single with none other than the one and only. <clears throat> Kevin, Kevin Samuel, Frederick Samuel. Oh wow! I don't, I don't know if that's that's just oh, okay. it. Just sound right. Yeah, it, it, sound right. it, it does. It does. But Johnny, what do you think about this promotion? Did you actually get a chance to look at the video? And everything? I did. It was, okay. Well, the one I saw was like a minute long. Yeah, it wasn't long. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, this was genius. I ain't gonna for. Hey, listen. I am not the biggest Future fan. Like I listen to Future's music. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, I enjoy it in in certain settings. Mm-hmm. Um, but this was genius. Um, whatever you think about Kevin Samuels. The fact that Future or who, Future's camp or whoever had the idea to hook up with Kevin Samuels, Samuels for this particular trailer or music video or whatever it is he got going, this was genius. This was smart as hell. I and, think this was great. Yeah, and shout out to the women listeners, OS. We're not endorsing Kevin Samuels in no way. We love black women, you know what I'm saying? But listen, this is this is marketing, right? And it's, it's kind of like, I'm going to trigger you with this marketing too. Like, we all know that the the toxic nature of Future's music and how he leans into it. Like, yep. he leans into being a, he, like the villain. Like, he leans into it. Yes, sir. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like, hey, if that's your MO and that helps you keep making these records and you got to pay all this child support, hell, I, will get, <laughs> I will get the tweets. I'll get the tweets jumping, too. Word. You know what I'm talking about? So, I mean, hey, oh, Worst man. Day has coming out. That's the name of the single. Worst Day has come out. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a good song. I think I like, I like it. So, so the song is out. Yeah. Okay. Song, I, I haven't, I haven't it, heard it. It was for a single. So, gotcha. Gotcha. I, I'm not sure if that's part of the actual video because mm-hmm. I haven't seen the video, but I did see the clip. Genius marketing. That's pretty much where it begins and ends, honestly. Like, I mean, oh, if you, you know, if people want to do think pieces on this, God bless. But there's. In today's time, that's for the type of musician that Future is, mm-hmm. for him to get with the content creator that Kevin Samuels is, mm-hmm. like, I don't think any smarter marketing could, ha- could be done this year. Like, this was perfect. <laughs> and you know what's so funny, man? People still, like, go on Kevin Samuels. Remember that whole thing where cancel Kevin Samuels? And I'm not saying that some of his rhetoric can't be wild at times. Mm-hmm. But hey, I, I I don't know. Like, I'm not, I, like I said, I don't be triggered in certain ways. Like, so, I, I'm, I, it's just, it is what it is. But I'm not saying that some of those things can't be hurtful to a certain demographic. Oh, of course. You know I, I, I 100%, 100% agree that. Agree with that. But, do you know those clips are still going up? You know he still of, does his show. Course. Do you know women still call into his show asking for advice? He like, like still all of those clips and things that have gone viral has done nothing but make his platform bigger. Mm-hmm. How do you think he was able to get with Future to do this marketing? Like mm-hmm. y'all did this. If y'all so upset, why y'all keep feeding into it? Like this is y'all fault. Man, <laughs> to it's, be honest, it's why it's a wild situation, man. But it's. <clears throat> Hey, I, I I got nothing for you. Like if that's if that's what Amen. if that's what presses your buttons, but that's what presses your it's buttons. You. It's, it's comedy to me. So you, my boy, right. my girl. <laughs> <laughs> you but know, yeah. it, it's strictly comedy. But speaking of comedy, man, uh, none other. Ti Clifford Harris, some may know him as, uh, has crossed over into the comedy realm. He's actually doing stand up comedy, and he's actually doing like pretty well from what the reports are saying. Uh, he was recently at the Laugh Factory in L.A. Um, 
pretty much getting his uh, feet wet for the Shaquille O'Neal uh, All-Star Comedy Jam he has it every uh, All-Star weekend. Johnny, what do you think about T.I., a very, very, very successful rapper, uh, merging into the stand-up comedy lane? Ralph, your segues are superior. My guy. Thank you. I love this man. That's my, that's my, that's my guy, man. Um, all right. T.I. doing stand up. So I've actually been seeing clips of T.I. doing stand up for like the last month. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. I applaud him for venturing out and doing doing something different. You know, he already been into the acting. Of course, he's a um, top tier MC in, yeah. in hip hop. Like we, we know all that. Yeah, so the yeah, fact yeah. that. <laughs> Basically, he probably was bored and was like, "Hey, I want to try stand up." So, I listen. I think it's dope. Um, yeah. Now, from the clips that I've seen, right, mm-hmm. I feel like this is it's a person that's beginning in any new field. Like yeah. he got, he gotta, he, it's gonna be rough. He gotta fill it out. The he gotta fill it out. Timing, you gotta work on that. And comedic timing is a thing that only a few people have really ever mastered. Like mm-hmm. some people are good, uh, comedians are good at it, but only a few comedians have like really mastered. So. Mm-hmm. As long as Ti, you know, continues to perfect his co- comedic craft, I think he, I think he'll be fine. Yeah. Um, the con- the content is there; it's just that timing. Yeah, he, yeah, he got to yeah, hit that timing. Yeah. Um, do I think it's too soon for him to be doing the Shaq All Star comedy joint? One hundred percent. Yes. Come on, listen. I, I understand this is Ti. I know this. I yeah, know that's Ti. But yeah. bro, like, nah. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. It, it's it's funny because like with with this, it's like Ti gets a little bit more grace because he is Ti. That's like say yeah. like people probably be laughing at the jokes they probably wouldn't give the regular stand up any time of day because he's Ti. This is true. So, do I think he can be successful? Why not? Why not? Because I think Ti has a certain charisma to where he can be funny. Yeah. Because like. You you see him in his little acting bits and things like that. He got a good com- oh yeah he got, he got a good comedic time. Definitely. I think Ti is a very underrated actor. I'm not saying he's you know Denzel Washington, but mm-hmm. I think that he has a level of acting in him. And I'm then when it's time that. to put the the little comedy sauce on it, he can do that too. Right. So the fact that he's even doing the laugh factor. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. To y'all could be, you know, real arrogant and say, I'm going to do the House of Blues, you know, at least and do, <laughs> do half half music, half show, like, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Something like that. <laughs> That's funny. So it, I, I, I enjoy T.I. actually going through the the comedy ringer because he's doing low, like, low shows. Yeah, like which? Low, like, low, like low, not low-level comedy shows, but, you know, just no smaller venues. You got to start out venues. as a comedian yeah. starting out. You got to start out at the at – the, the Chitlin Circuit joints. Like, yeah. you got to start there. You and have then, to. And then remember the conversation we had about T.I. and the allure. This is why we don't feel like T.I. is. Because <laughs> T.I. do a stand-up comedy and, and, and Nas would never do. Yay or Jay-Z would never do this. Is T.I. the first comedi- uh, the first rapper to try comedy? Like, try stand-up comedy? I don't think it's. I don't, I don't think. I, I mean, I, I think so. I think so. Because you what know, it's probably been rap. It's probably been com- uh, comedians that tried to rap. Lou Duvall. <laughs> oh yeah. And he had. And well, he, got he, hit, he, got he hit. has had hit songs. He got hit songs. <laughs> so <laughs> hey, can't be mad at it. <laughs> right. <laughs> now I, I would imagine the transition from comedy to rap is easier than the transition from rap to comedy. Did I say that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, from, no, from comedy to com- rap. Comedy to rap, rap is easier than rap to comedy. You think so? No, because I well. I beg to differ. I think that is. Or should I say? It, should I say comedy to music? Because it doesn't. Ha- it doesn't it necessarily have to be, have to be rap. Well, but the thing is, you're still testing out material and music. Like, okay, you're still testing out jokes and songs that you worked out on your own time in your own place and your own. And then you mm-hmm. got to go in front of a, a, a crowd. And then these crowds get bigger the better that you get at these crowds. And I mean, you don't necessarily have to go in front of crowds with music. You can just put the music out and see if it's accept- okay. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking more of the the old like, school, like the. Show perspective, or? yeah, like the show. Well, the I guess the old p- perspective of getting out there doing jokes or doing music, like because Ti has done the chitlin circuit of rap, where you <laughs> you know I, I make these songs in trap That's and true. bankhead. All right, cool. That's Let true. me go see if yeah. And then when people start liking, okay, the, the crowds get bigger, mm-hmm. the deals come, like mm-hmm. that that things happen. So I think. That's pretty much what we're looking at. Well, well, no, what you're, what you're saying is 100 percent true, mm-hmm. but I think. Well, the in the time that Ti came up in music is completely different now. Like, well, that's true you too. only well, like you could get hot 
on SoundCloud or something, then people want to want you to come to. Well, you know what's so crazy? Shows. Comedy is like that too because Ti could have went the route of the the, the youngins with the skits nah, and things right, like that. You're right, you're right. And he didn't do that. You're right. He said, "I'm gonna go try these jokes. These jokes I wrote." And I mean, only only a few of the Instagram comedians mm-hmm. have successfully transitioned into stand up because, because it's, it's different it's, too. It's, it's still it's a different. different too. It's, it's still different. Yeah, when you yeah. got to tell these jokes in front of people or when you have prepared skits, those are two different yeah. ways. Yeah. So yeah. no, I it's funny to see one of the the, you know, one of the the rap I you know, rap icons mm-hmm. of the 2000s do stand up. Yeah. Usually we would clown them, but TI has never had a bad like fall off when it comes to anything, honestly. Like, you know, he's had his name in some silly headlines, mm-hmm. but I mean not as like TI on bad time on ba- on hard time, so let me go. Let yeah, me go get to yeah, these, yeah, these yeah. comedy. Right. So that's why I think we receiving it a little bit better. Now, if it was somebody that just fell off the earth completely, mm-hmm. like say if Ja Rule started taking stand up, we niggas would be <laughs> on his ass. Oh, they'd be roasting. They'd be roasting they'd be roasting Ja Rule. Hard. Like <laughs> hard. Oh yeah, no, that's funny. <laughs> Shit, honestly, I think if Wale decided to transition to comedy, they, no, they, they, would kill, <laughs> they would kill Wale today. <laughs> oh, you can, you couldn't get your songs off, so now you trying to <laughs> now tell jokes. Now you trying to tell jokes. Right. Yeah, they they would kill Wale for that. Man, exactly. Uh, <laughs> no, that's funny. No, but this this is dope, man. Listen, I I hope I hope Ti is able to like get you know whatever whatever goal he has in comedy. I hope he's able to achieve it. Yeah. Um. Personally, I'm not going to see him until he refines himself. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I, listen, I'm I'm never knocking somebody for trying something new. It's I'm, ne- new, I'm never it's, knocking. It's a, it's a new hustle, and I ain't mad at him for finding a new bag. Like, Word, that, no, that, that's no, that's the real thing. But and if man. if he if he gets really good at it, I'll go to a show. That'll be dope. Because I'm not listen right now. I'm not paying to go see a Ti comedy show. No, it, I, feel, I feel that. Yeah, I feel that. I now mean, just look at the clips. Big facts. That's how I find new comedians. I look at the Laugh Factory uh, YouTube. <laughs> I lo- For real. Damn. No, nah, that no, nah, that would make sense. That makes sense. That <laughs> makes that's sense. how I find new comedians. I'm like, oh, that guy, that guy was funny. But you know what? Also with Ti, with him being from Atlanta and there being such a heavy comedic community community yeah, yeah. In, in Atlanta, um, I think he has comedian OGs that he could lean on and you know take pointers from and things like I mean, that. Duval, so, like that's his friend. Duval, um, K Dub, mm-hmm. um shit. Right now Carlos Miller, like a lot a lot of people that that are centered in 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 Atlanta right now in comedy, like he's able to I guess you know test jokes on, get get tips, get pointers and things like yeah, that. So yeah. I, I think that's dope as well. So hopefully that helps him in cultivating his comedic chops. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, man. Speaking of jokes, man, we got to get to these jokes, and we got to, you know, kind of shield ourselves because I don't know if people's gonna really say anything to us about this. But we got to, you know, Cornell, man. I I refer to him as Cornell. I know I got on Johnny one time about that. That was funny. That was actually a year ago. (laughs) (laughs) But Nelly, man, Nelly, uh, (laughs) Cornell Hayes Jr., man, he uh, released a sex tape accidentally on Instagram, and the internet was frying his ass. Like I was like, damn. <laughs> I'm stupid. I see Cornette, Cornell Hayes Jr. showed his junior. <laughs> I'm t- hey man. <laughs> Look, first of all, Nelly said that he accidentally uploaded this this video to Instagram. I call bullshit. I call BS <laughs> fam. Come on now. I know he knows how to use Instagram. And if he didn't, I know somebody around him knows how to use Instagram. So that's BS. Two, why are you even doing this? In the, like, why are you putting this, even if it's your close friends, right? Why are you putting this on Instagram? I just. I got nothing. I, I got nothing for you. Neither do I. And he's not the only celebrity the last week to do some shit like this. You hear about the other one? Yeah, I, 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 I didn't. I go. I didn't go looking for any of this bullshit. I didn't it, either. It, it, this shit it, just, it just, it just, this shit just appeared. I'm like, what the fuck? Lil Fizz. Same, same thing. But you expect this out of Lil Fizz. You don't expect this out of somebody that sold uh, millions and millions of records. Uh, B two K them to sell millions. Well, Nelly millions and millions. Of Million, records, millions like, more. Mil- right, right. <laughs> diamond records, like diamond. You got a diamond album, man. There's I would no listen. I, I wouldn't expect this from Fizz either because he's in his in his thirties. Damn it, he should know how to use this shit too. 
I'm sorry. I try not to cuss. But <laughs> he he should because it's silly. It's, it's, it's no, it's really silly. It's, it's silly. Super it's silly, silly. silly. And I, I this is actually indefensible. <laughs> no, right. That's why. That's why you're not with Shanti now. <laughs> She want to, you know, where my hug is. Right. Nelly, come on, oh, baby. my God. That, that bothered me. Like, <laughs> I used to make fun of people that used to go up to girls and say, where my hug at? Mm-hmm. Because why Why you got to do that? I, I, I mean, know. if you try, just, just be trash. Ah! Oh, take your L, bro. Take your L. <laughs> um, but, nah, Nelly, you got to relax, bro. <laughs> that's all I got. Like, I, that's really all I got. Like, that's re- It's like, I don't even want to stay here long because I, I I'm uncomfortable talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Is, is that the end of the docket? No, think, no, we got, okay. we got, you know, we got a blur, man. We we find a blur topic for you. Oh no, we find oh, something. Well, no, oh, no, 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 you're right. Nah, no, you're right. I'm tripping. We That's got, my fault. You no, know, we got a little, we got a little time, man. But the DCEU released this, uh, pretty much a Super Bowl trailer ahead of time, right? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of that's been coming out. Why are they doing the movie trailers before the boot, like for the actual game? But I don't. All right. No, no, no. Oh. We gonna because we gonna stay here for a second. Okay. I see a lot of people. A lot of people have asked that the last week or so. That pe- the 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 people who put advertisements during the Super Bowl have been doing this for like the last three years. Really? Yes. Oh, okay. we've had the same. Not you and I. Oh, but the, okay. The community, social oh, okay. media, has had this same conversation for the last three years. Really? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. But anyway, but now back back to it, right? Yeah. <laughs> so the DCEU or DC Comics has put out is a uh, trailer of his properties that's coming out. Uh, throughout the year 2022, at least the movies, right? Because I'm yeah, yeah, talking about any movies, shows, yeah, but yeah. just movies. So you have the Batman, which we will not discuss. We have talked about Batman at least the past three weeks. <laughs> we'll be out in a, in a couple weeks. Some Tickets on yeah. sale now. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. You got Flash, Aquaman, and Black Adam. Johnny, what do you think about the Super Trailer that DCE put out? Super Trailer was fire. Um, I enjoyed seeing clips from these properties because I don't think we've. We haven't seen much from Black Adam. We've no. seen like no. pictures. Uh, we haven't seen much from the Flash. I think we've only seen pictures. Well, no, they had the little trailer. They had the Flash uh, sneak peek trailer. Oh damn, you're right. I, yeah, yeah. I forgot about it. Damn, I'm tripping. Um, we just ain't seen nothing from Black Adam or Aquaman. Aqu- Aquaman, that's the other one. Um, and so being being able to see the suits for these superheroes um i think was fire uh hawkman what, what's my guy playing all hawkman? this uh, it's my boy let, let me tell you something that shit look like if i had the money to put into cosplay mm-hmm. i would try to make that armor like to like cosplay because that shit was hard like mm-hmm. that was mm-hmm. fire um i love seeing the flash suit the flash suits because mm-hmm. i think i saw like maybe two or three different ones throughout that trailer yeah, yeah um of course the batman is the batman yeah, yeah, yeah. um yeah hey man aquaman i think he got the less shine honestly it was just like jason memore saying something and then it was like that's it like it, it really wasn't nothing in the movie like it really was black adam's trailer honestly like the, I could see, yeah, I could it see was that. like I see that. for the whole <clears throat> super trailer like they really gave you mostly black adam stuff and i'm so with with black adam i'm trying to figure out like is Black Adam a villain in this movie? Because mm-hmm. we got we got Black Adam, we got Hawkman, we got Cyclone, we got Doctor Fate. Doctor Fate look fire too, and we got Doctor Fate. So it's like, what's happening? Because it's well, like the it, Justice it's, Society. It, uh, well, yeah. Um, from from my understanding, uh, this is an origin story, right? Mm-hmm. So it's gonna be like him setting up, you know, what he is or what he was before he even you know crosses over with. The other, you know, the other DCEU stuff, like especially the Shazam film. Right, so right. I think he's going to be more of an anti-hero, but I think he he was probably a hero once before. That's what it sounded like from the trailer. Yeah, because he said something like, "My son sacrificed himself so I could have a better planet or better yeah. life or something, something to that effect." Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it, yeah, it does seem as if he's going to be an anti-hero, but it, from what I remember, at least. In the comic books, he's a Shazam villain. Okay. So, I don't know. I mean, I, listen, either way, I'm going to watch it. No, I'm, I'm now, excited now it's to so see it. crazy now. Uh, the Rock playing in another yet another film, but I've never been excited to see, like, a movie <laughs> with The Rock in it until now. Yeah. Like, The Rock that did 87 films since, <laughs> since 2020. And 20, goddamn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, it's kind of like, ah. But... I think this is kind of like something that he's invested in. Like, oh yeah, like you can Definitely tell he's inve- like, yeah. like he was invested in bringing the character to life, mm-hmm. and he it seems like he's very well versed in what the comic, the comic origin is, the source material. So, I think when you get that type of enthusiasm from the lead actor, and I don't think like The Rock is like the best actor, but I don't think he's trash. Like he's far oh, from yeah, trash. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He's far from trash, but I don't think he's like the you know 
top tier either. But I mean, he used to act in the WWF. That is true. So that I is mean, true. Shit, why you think? True. Why you think John Cena out here shining? That is true. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying. Okay, I'm just bring, saying. bring it to me. Bring it to me. Bring it <laughs> to me. Saying. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay, respect. <laughs> but but I mean, no, just I, I think the Rock is a a, a decent actor. But he's missed the box office too. So when you actually when you miss the box office, you ain't gotta act that good. Also true. <laughs> very, very true. Very, very true. So But no, I, I have I have um I have high hopes for the Black Adam movie. Yeah, yeah. Um very high hopes. Like now, uh the Flash, I think the I think once we get a little bit more details on the Flash, like I think you excited for the storyline already. I am. I, I think I, I wanna see just a little more. Like, mm-hmm. you know, just a little more and then I'll be like, Oh, okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I just wanna see a a smidget more, you know what I'm saying? In that trailer, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, I saw three different versions of Barry Allen. See? Like the the Flashpoint storyline, like this is one of my one of my favorite comic storylines. So mm-hmm. the fact that they doing this like in the movie is like fucking amazing. Yeah. Like I'm just I'm just very thoroughly excited and I'm trying I'm trying not to have my hopes really high. You know, just because it's a DCEU property, uh, but I'm I, like I'm really excited for this. Movie. Well, this is the one that's supposed to be the best one, right? Like to, I think to me, uh, it looks like Black Adam getting all the love, like Black all the TLC, because the way they they, they they put that one in the trailer, like oh, but like, but Bat, you, like we know, Batman sells itself. Black Adam is completely new. The Flash we've already been introduced you know, introduced to, yeah. to you know either it's live action film or tv mm-hmm. and then aquaman we already know what that is yeah but and which, Ad- which is why i feel like they are pushing black adam the way they are because yeah. shit to to the masses this and is I, a this is a new movie property now to you know what's so crazy like i won't like i've seen enough of black adam to inspire me but i need to see more from flash which is crazy like <laughs> <laughs> but i but i think that's just you as an individual i don't, yeah. i wouldn't i wouldn't necessarily say that's how the yeah, masses, the masses feel. Yeah, feel yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So no, I'm, that's what's up. E- either way, shit, all four of these movies might be fire. Oh no, no, I'm not. I, I think all of them, and you think this could be enough to you know kind of whisk us away from Marvel because whisk us be, away. No, because no, think about it like this. I know Flash and Black Panther come out the same month. Don't Fla- doesn't Flash come out in November? I b- ooh, I b- ooh, I think so. Black Panther comes out in November, and Black Panther is such a mystery to us. We don't know anything about it because you know, unfortunately, rest in peace, Chad with Bozeman. Yeah. But and then you know the the, the uh, Letitia Wright drama. She's back. She she ain't in the film. She back in the film. She ain't go test. She is testing. Like I don't know. Like yeah, it's, I, I don't know. So that. it's like it's a lot going on with that film. So I, th- I think a lot of people are with with the passing of Chadwick. I mean, of course, you and I are vet, like we invested. Like we yeah, deep yeah, in the shit. Yeah, but I think it. a lot of people aren't as invested in Black Panther two as they once were because, well, they haven't started started marketing for it yet, but. It just seems like the the buzz around it, at least in the black community, has died has died now. Well, I mean, you know, once, once the marketing picks up, trust, you, oh, trust, okay. trust, trust me. Hey, hey, hey. You know, we late to the party. You know, we we all you know as a as a community, we late to the party. But you know, me and you, we on the train already. No, no big fan. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I, I'm gonna say it now. I know I said it before, but don't show up like we going to Zamunda. Uh, come on now, please come don't. on now. You know the dashiki. Man, they got nah. the kids cloth. Man, the, the Democrats put it down for us to pick it back up. I come knew, on, Johnny. I knew you was about to say that. I <laughs> promise, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, but man. I'm just saying, man. But now I, I, one quick point before mm-hmm. we get off of this, I think that Doctor Strange and the success of the Multiverse of Madness could probably fuck up what the Flashpoint is. Because uh, it comes out, I think when your when your movie when you get your when you get your issue off first with the Multiverse, <laughs> Marvel done did it twice. What's funny? What's Marvel, funny? Marvel, Marvel had, would have done it twice before DC can do it once. The funny part <laughs> is you're not wrong. Now. No, no, I'm not. You know, I'm not. I'm not sitting on the. No, film, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, no I'm, I'm making. I, I'm making this a Marvel versus DC shit. No, you are, <laughs> and because that. No, because honestly, that's what's coming. So, uh, Doctor Strange comes out May, May something, right? Yeah. Cool. We got from May to November is five, five or so months, six months or whatever. So by the time we actually start getting real trailers for the flash okay. all kind of think pieces and shit for to come out oh how does this compare to doctor strange will the multiverse be multiple time like all kind of i already i can already foresee it even though these storylines yeah they do they do center around multiverses but the storylines aren't the same <laughs> like it's it's crazy it's 
Either way, I'm going to see all this shit. Yeah, it don't I'm, matter. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm talking shit. I'm going to see everything. Like it don't matter to me. <laughs> Just it's crazy. We, you you and I have ha- have had these conversations quite often in the last couple of years. But like, you see how excited we still are for these movies? Like, ain't no superhero fatigue. Ain't none. <laughs> We're going to see uh, a, another rendition of Batman. We have seen Batman <laughs> so many since '89. <coughs> it's true, it's and true. yet, listen, still, still excited for a three for a three hour Batman movie. God damn! <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in there. You feel yeah, me? Oh. Hey, I actually buy my tickets today. I actually forgot they was on sale, oh, but yeah. I'm, I'm buying my joints today. But yeah, man, that's that's all I got. I'm. It it it, it looks like. Uh, the DCEU has the opportunity to redeem itself this year. It seems like. Now, we're we going to see. Four movies? We're going to see. Four movies? And we not count, I'm not counting the Batman in that. I'm sorry. Like, if it well, ain't connect, it's, it's not, it ain't, it's it not connect, canon connect, to the if, rest. If it ain't connected, we ain't counting it. <laughs> like, you got to count it. That, that, so that, that's just a DC movie, not yeah. a DCEU EU. movie. Yeah. So. When we start talking about Black Adam and all them other joints. Yeah. Yeah. Hey man, that listen, they got the opportunity. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. Yeah, we definitely gonna see. But OS Gang, we have reached the end of the docket. We hope that you guys enjoyed these topics. Make sure you know, you know, you know, comment and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, right? like, share, subscribe, yeah. hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. We appreciate y'all. Um Oh, happy Valentine's Day. We didn't yeah. say that yeah, to yeah. all the women out there. Happy Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, hope y'all enjoy y'all day and whatnot. Uh so now we're gonna get us a song of the week.